Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Good morning. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying your week and uh, looking forward to the Champions League final on Saturday. Uh, a massive congratulations, of course, to Ainsley Maitland-Niles on winning the UEFA Conference League. Not much involvement over the course of his loan spell in Italy, but he did end up getting the trophy at the end of it. And, of course, commiserations to Reese Nelson, who lost the final, did start in the game and has ended his loan now with final after a impressive season um, on loan in the Dutch side. Really kind of picked things up towards the end of the campaign, possibly even putting himself in contention for an Arsenal spot next season. We will have to wait and see if that turns out to be the case. But good morning to everybody in the chat box. Hope you're doing good and well. Thank you so much for joining me so early on. I did notice, I mean, I, as soon as I put the show up, uh, so many of you in the chat box this morning, which is always fantastic. Um, you were so close, Dave, to being first, but Trevor got there first. Uh, good morning to Morgie. Uh, good morning to Simon. Uh, good morning to Matt, to Manu. Good morning to Ozzy, to uh, Anthony. Good morning, guys. The Essex 10. Uh, Damien, uh, Ozzy Guna, we've got Jose, we've got GGTV for you, we've got uh, Martin, uh, good morning guys, Mark, Mark, double Mark, Ian, and uh, plenty more familiar faces as well. Good morning to everybody, hope you're all doing good. And well, um, we are going to be discussing very interesting topics today, um, specifically surrounding Eddie and Ketia, which we'll get on to shortly. Um, but I do want to point you in the direction, of course, first of all, to the show that we did last night. Myself and Ben from the Marseille View broke down William Saliba's entire season for Marseille. So if you want to get all the information on William Saliba, how he got on uh, in the French city of Marseille, of course, and how he's fared in comparison to players like White and Gabriel, we do statistical comparisons, uh, then make sure you get on that. Uh, there will be another tactical breakdown for you guys today at some point. I need to decide which player I'm going to do it on, and I'm going to give you a bit of a say with a poll later on in today's show as to who we're going to do that focus on for the show this afternoon. I'm going to give you three options, and you're going to get to pick who we go for. So make sure you stick around for that. Do drop a like on the video, of course, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. There is currently a poll going in the chat box which we'll come to in just a second. We start, though, with news that breaks minutes after we finish our shows. Arsenal have got a habit of dropping news at 9am, which is, you know, just so apt considering the show is at 8am by the time we finished. It's already out of date. And yesterday, that, of course, happened once again. Mohamed El Nenny confirmed to have signed a brand new contract with Arsenal for a one-year extension with the option of an extra year. Um, I am fine with this, absolutely fine with it. Um, there is no reason why we shouldn't keep a player in the squad that is happy to be in the squad, um, happy to be a squad player, happy to be fifth choice if need be. And he should be about fifth choice. You know, he shouldn't be the backup. He shouldn't be, you know, the player if we lose party that we bring him in. We should be looking to sign players to push him back as far down the pecking order as possible. But if he's willing to be in the squad, I am so, so for it. I don't mind him being in the group, I think. To go and call it anything other than just a very decent deal maybe is a little bit too far. Uh, I'm very, very happy with him signing a new deal, and I don't mind that whatsoever. Moving forwards, and Katalin Krujan, uh, 19, I believe, still. Uh, your old uh, Romanian youth international has signed a brand new contract uh, with Arsenal's under-23s. You've probably not seen too much of this guy in the youth team because he suffered a serious knee injury and was missing for a lot of the last campaign. He is now back for the new season. He's ready to get going again. And he was really considered to be one of the most exciting kids in the programme. This is way before players like Salah um, kind of came to the fore. Salah Radin, of course, Hutchinson. Katalin Kurjan was really thought of as someone to be uh, kind of one of the next big things. And he suffered that big injury and that's kept him out and allowed players like Kido taylor Ha and Marcelo Flores to overtake him in the pecking order. So this is a player that you need to be aware of. It's a player that you need to look out for in the youth team next season. Um, and it's great news that he signed a brand new contract. Let's hope that he recovers from this injury and returns as quickly as possible and back into the team playing to the top of his abilities. Because it's very good news that he signed a brand new contract with the club. Now, someone who will not seemingly be staying with the team is Daniel Ballard. Ballard is expected to lead the club. He spent time with Millwall on loan last season and was arguably one of their best players. 22 years of age now, Northern Ireland international, only has a year or two left on his current deal, I believe. 
um, and could leave the Arsenal this summer. In fact, Arsenal have effectively told him that it's probably best that you do move on, not because we've got anything against you, but just because you're not going to be getting into the starting line of Saliba, holding and maybe even another signing that we make this summer. So Ballard is expected to move on. Hopefully Arsenal can get a decent figure. Only a couple of million pounds, I would imagine, is what you'd end up getting for him. But fingers crossed Arsenal can add a certain number of millions to their transfer kitty with a sale of Ballard this summer. Now, as soon as we spoke about Adam Hlozhek yesterday, uh, of course, it is always the way that this news uh, changes. Then I know that it changed, not only because I saw the news when it dropped, but because a million of you in the comments section are very quick to point out that he is now set to join Bayer Leverkusen, the young forward will move there for around 30 million euros. A very, very good deal. Very bit, a good, smart piece of business by Bayer Leverkusen. But could this be opening the door for a possible Patrick Schick departure anytime soon? Logic does play in a striker position, can play there, has scored plenty of goals there for Sparta Prague. Could they be covering themselves just in case they lose Patrick Schick this summer? I, for one, hope that they are. And hope to see Patrick Schick join Arsenal. I hope that we push for this tri- type of signing. We've not seen too many big links with him so far. But perhaps now after Bayer Leverkusen have signed a possible long-term replacement for him. Although I wouldn't out and out call him a replacement for him. Maybe there is an option for Schick to move on this summer. Watch this space. Now, Gabriel Jesus' price has been something that has com- just consistently fluctuated all the time that we've covered this story. However, reports yesterday saying that Whilst Manchester City wants about £55 million to sign him, Arsenal are likely to get any kind of deal done around the £45 million figure. This is hopefully what we're going to see completed this summer. One of the earlier signings that Arsenal would want to do. Jesus wants to leave. He's very open to joining Arsenal, even without Champions League football. Arsenal just need to pay the money that City are asking to get him into the team. Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see what happens. But £45 million is said to be the rough estimate of what he will now cost Arsenal. Now, a player that will cost significantly uh, this summer if we are to sign him both in wages and signing on fee and, of course, transfer fee is Serge Gnabry. And according to Sport Build in Germany, Arsenal are certainly interested in signing Serge Gnabry this summer if it is if they're unable to do it with his contract situation continuing to run down they may wait to see if they can get him on a free in 2023 um but arsenal are said to be interested in trying to bring serge canabry back he is said to be interested in a return to the premier league it could be a deal that works out for all parties and with the news that we're going to discuss in a second it might be that arsenal only move for the single striker and instead move not for a second striker, but a wide player that can also play in the middle. And Serge Gnabry certainly fits that mould. So we will see if indeed this transpires into anything more serious across the transfer window. But for now, just a story that we need to make sure that we're across throughout this summer. And our headline story of the day, the news that rocked Arsenal's social media platforms yesterday evening, got everybody talking about whether or not this is the right decision. I'm certainly intrigued to see what you guys are feeling in the chat box. And you can vote on our poll in this this morning's show as well to get your thoughts across. Was Arsenal right to renew Nketiah's contract? Yes, no. Yes, only if we sign two forwards. Yes, but not for this wage packet. They are your four options. And that wage packet is said to be, according to Sammy Mottbell, as much as £100,000 per week. Now, before we get into kind of the the debate about whether or not this is right, about how much money this is, about whether or not he's earned that much, about the comparisons to other players in the squad. What I would say is that Elliot uh, from the Arsenal Vision podcast made a very, very good point yesterday uh, on Twitter. He tweeted saying, here's the problem with any debate about player wages. We don't actually know them. Unlike some other sports, the wage reporting is wildly inaccurate and leaves out loads of ways the player is compensated. Additionally, ranging from signing on bonuses to club marketing deals. We don't know, ultimately, the um, the finite details, the how it's broken down. We don't know if there's appearance bonuses, about whether there's a signing on fee included or whether the signing on fee that's been quoted at around, I think, £5 million is already included in that possible wage packet. We don't know if there's a goal bonus in there. You know, lots of stuff could be involved in the £100,000 per week. And it's important to just lay out that context before we start talking about it. 
What I would say is that from my position, I, in that poll that I put up, would be voting yes, but only if we still signed two forwards. I have no issue with Nketiah being given a new contract if it did not affect our transfer plans for this summer. If it meant that we were still going out and signed two forwards, be it, you know, two strikers or a really good goal scoring wide forward that can play in the middle and on top of that, a really good striker, I didn't have too much issue with this. Um, because I think it would have not then affected. And we then keep a player that could be worth significantly more in the future. And I think that Reese raises the point that he's got five goals in eight starts. His last eight starts have returned five goals in the Premier League. Two of those coming against Chelsea, of course. Um, and of course, one coming in the game against Everton as well, more recently too. He's a player that I just think that we can't, flick a switch and just be like, no, I don't want to get rid. I think he's there's a worthy discussion around him. And certainly what I would say is that I've written him off in the past. There's a running joke in our WhatsApp group how I've written him off in the past and how I never thought he would make it at Arsenal. And I want to be proved wrong. You know, if he proves me wrong, it's for the benefit of Arsenal Football Club. And that's all that matters to me. All that matters is that he proves me wrong about my previous thoughts, that he gets into the team, that he keeps scoring, that he proves more people wrong. But, you know, scoring five goals in the last eight starts, when he spoke specifically on, if you remember the Beautiful Game podcast, he said he's never been given a proper chance. He's never been given a run of games in the team. If he kept up that five goals per eight starts across an entire season, then you'll suddenly look at someone who's scoring 15 to 20 Premier League goals. And that's a very, very good return. There aren't too many players in the Premier League that are returning that. It's a big if because it's only eight games. It's only eight starts. We've got to go off nine starts if you include, I think, Southampton. Um, but the last eight starts, five goals. Um, I don't think it's so easy to just go, no, no, we should never have considered this. But what I have said a number of times is that, for me, it was always dependent upon whether or not you know, that we managed to to bring in two forwards on top of Nketiah re-signing a new deal. Um, and that's what we've got to hope for. We've got to hope that Arsenal still go out and sign those two goal-scoring forwards to compete with Nketiah. I don't want Nketiah being Arsenal's outright number one starter. If that is the case at the start of the season, then I would have a lot of questions, a lot of questions. But as I've said before, I don't mind signing him up to a brand new contract if it meant we went out to get two forwards. What I would say, and this is an interesting one from Anwar, she says he is special and better than Calvert-Lewin and Tammy. Don't agree about Tammy Abraham. However, if you told me that we were going to have to be paying 50 odd million quid to sign Dominic Calvert-Lewin, I'd rather keep Nketiah. Uh, that might seem mad, especially considering where my position on Nketiah was before, and especially considering where my position on Calvert-Lewin was about a year ago. But I'd rather that we kept Nketiah than paid 50 odd million quid for Calvert-Lewin. I certainly would rather that at this stage. I think there's more potential coming from Nketiah right now. He hasn't got the injury issues that Calvert-Lewin has right now. And he's showing he can score goals already for Arsenal as well. He's already acclimatised to this environment and he's got that motivation as well to make it at Arsenal, which he clearly has too. Let's have a quick check on that poll that I did put up into the chat box. 29% um, of you have said yes, it was right to renew Nketiah's contract. 22 of you have sent, 22% of you have said no. And this is nearly 500 of you have voted on this poll. Yes, only if we sign two forwards. That's the most popular one right now at 38%. And yes, but not for this wage packet currently on 11%. Very split. Really good to see the amount of split kind of opinion in here. It creates discussion. We love that. And now I'm going to go through some of your comments in the chat box regarding this. So make sure you get your thoughts in there. Matt G says, my question is, why hasn't Eddie been given a run of games? Laka wasn't scoring. Was Eddie not showing enough in training? Well, I think it was a case of Arteta wasn't yet willing to kind of sub out Lacazette. Eventually, he did. You know, eventually, and not only did he, you know, keep him out in terms of the Southampton game because Lacazette, I think, what was ill uh, during that period. But he kept him back in for the following games. You know, he kept him back in for the Chelsea game. He kept him in going forward. He never dropped him. So he's kept that faith in him. He's kept giving him those starts and it did pay off. And, you know, had we have maybe defended a bit better or scored a couple of extra goals, who knows? Had we've had those players in the, the season, we probably would have got a win against any of those sides. 
Uh, Lynn says, Tom, we must bring in another central midfielder, someone who can feed Eddie. Absolutely agree with you, Lynn. Uh, Martin says, crazy if we only sign Gabriel Jesus as a forward, then we are one injury away from having Eddie as our starter. Massive mistake from Arteta. I hope we get Gnabry. Yeah, for me, it's a case of we have to still sign two forwards, and that includes a wide forward who can play in the middle if we need them to. We need that level of pushing kind of of competition in the front line. If it is, if Gabriel Jesus is the only forward we sign on top of Nketiah this summer, that's just not good enough. Uh, Rohan says, hi, Tom. Who has the option with Elneny? Is it the player or the club? The club have the option. Uh, Aaron says, Tom, having a push takes a push too. And uh, Nketiah has that push, but he can't make it by himself. He needs, I assume you're going to say, you know, that, that creation probably. Um, Joseph says, I like the fact that Eddie signed, got his contract. Now, since Eddie and Jesus are similar profiles, we should move for a Jesus. We should move on from a Jesus and get a target man like a Skamaka and a winger like Gakpo. Yeah, I agree. If we are going to sign Gabriel Jesus and we've renewed Eddie, you know, what I want to see is that contrasting physical striker. AFC Tilladai says, Tom flip flops on Eddie, he says jokingly. Look, if he proves me wrong, I'll be happy to get out the flip-flops and change my mind on Eddie Nketiah without a shadow of a doubt. But I need him to prove me wrong. And if he does, look, I want him to. And I'm hoping that all of you guys that don't want him to sign that new contract want him to prove you wrong. Because if he does, it is for the benefit of Arsenal Football Club. And that is always, always going to be the primary uh, kind of option around this story anyway we're going to end the news there we're going to move on to the questions in the chat box now after this short break and we're also going to throw up the next poll into the chat box to get you guys voting on who you'd like to see us cover in a tactical breakdown show later today let's have that break Okay, let's jump into the chat box. But first of all, I'm going to end this poll um, on our screen. What we're going to do is we're going to set up a brand new poll in the chat box. That poll is going to be on who do you want me to cover on the Tactical Breakdown show? Today, that's the question. Your options are Gabriel Jesus, Victor Ozimen. Or Aaron Hickey. They are your three options. I can do any of those three today. Um, and you get to choose which one we're going to be going for. Um, sorry if you're watching this on playback, you won't be able to vote. Um, but those that are watching live this morning, we do these shows every morning at 8 a.m. We're going to be doing a tactical breakdown show dedicated to one of these three players this afternoon with the help of some expert insight. Get your votes in on that poll and we'll be covering whoever you choose uh, as as easily and as quickly as we feasibly can. Um, let's go to uh, Martin. He says, Tom, any truth to the Basuma rumours? I only see him linked to Newcastle Spurs and West Ham. Is it just fans pushing this again? Uh, I expect Basuma probably will move on this summer, whether or not it's to one of those three teams or to Arsenal you just named. There is no kind of outright favourite for the moment. Aston Villa certainly looked to be in the frame as well with Basuma once again, despite even signing Kamara. That could open up Douglas Luiz to a move this summer. But having Kamara, Douglas Luiz and Basuma is a hell of a midfield three options they've got to play in that deep pivot role that they want. Um, so let's keep your eyes on Villa in terms of the race of Basuma, but certainly nothing right now. Uh, Walter says, uh, of course, who is Bobby in the chat box? Do you think re-signing Eddie and Mo gives us more clout to improve other areas? I hope so. And I think this is a really maybe underestimated thought process, Bobby, that you're bringing up there. If we if we re-sign Eddie, if we have that Mo um, uh, recovered and, and renewed, then maybe it gives us the option to go for two forwards, including a wide player, go for those two fullback upgrades that we need, go for us two central midfielders. Possibly it does. Maybe it gives us more scope and more wiggle room in order to invest in more key positions or maybe invest more in one player. Had it been before that we, you know, we had to let go of Nketiah, maybe now we can spend even more on one player, but get an even higher level of player in the summer. Perhaps it has those things associated with it so we'll have to wait and see um let's go to jacob uh, who says how much realistically do you think we have to spend this summer have to spend is obviously a very difficult terminology to use because it's not about how much you spend it's about what we spend it on i have waxed lyrical about the fact that we have spent one billion pounds plus on players since 2007 
but we've spent it really badly. You know, we've I can name since up until the point that Arteta was appointed, I can name on just my fingers how many good players that I'd say progressed as forwards with that eight hundred odd million quid that we spent since two thousand and seven. So it's not for me how much do we have to spend. It's about what we spend it on. In my mind, if we go out and sign, you know, the two forwards, um, two central midfielders, a fullback, a goalkeeper, which we've done, um, a there's one other player that I want to talk about as well that I've completely gone out of my head. I want to see that experienced player come in, possibly even a centre back like Kaladu Kulabali to add that experience to the centre half role as well next season. I just want to see us be smart in the market. That's what I ask for. I don't always ask for huge investment. I want to see intelligent investment. That's what I want to see from Arsenal. Uh, Rich says, Tom, are you not concerned based off Arteta's comments on Eddie will now only get one forward and use Balogun for the Europa League and the uh, Eddie-Jesus combination in the Prem? I am concerned. I'd be lying if I wasn't concerned that, you know, this is going to affect how many strikers we're able or how many forwards we're able to sign in the summer. I hope that it doesn't. But I am, you know, I I am concerned that it is going to have an effect on that. So let's wait and see. But there is a concern. And I'd be worried myself if there wasn't a concern. There's nearly 900 of you watching, guys, this morning. Please make sure, if you haven't already done so, to drop a like on the video. I can see so many of you are voting in our polls. Make sure that once you've voted in the poll that you've also dropped a like on the video too. Uh, The poll is very, very close right now in terms of who you want me to cover in today's show. 31% saying Gabriel Jesus. 38% 38% saying Victor Ozimen and 31% saying Aaron Hickey. Don't you worry. We will still be covering the other two uh, in Tactical Breakdown shows. I'm just giving you the control on who you want to see us cover first. I'll also be putting a poll out on Twitter as well if you are watching on playback too. Uh, Daz says, Tom, can we sign Jesus, Gakpo, Schick and Tillemans or am I dreaming too much? You're probably dreaming too much. Does but you know who well, it's what the transfer window is about. It's about dreaming. Uh, Son of Ayan says, Tom, do you think it's worth risking failure in the Europa League to promote and blood promising youngsters while we focus on the Premier League next season? The thing is, I think you can actually blood youngsters in the Europa League group stage in certain matches and not risk it. I think that you can, you know, add one or two kids into a team when you're playing against certain sides, especially you know the the, the third and fourth best sides in a group. You can certainly risk certain young players. Um, and give them opportunity because the level is just sent, is just genuinely that much lower. Um, but you know, it still needs to be a priority for us. We still need to be pushing forwards in the Europa League because it is an, it's a way to qualify for the Champions League in the following season. Um, Joshua says, "Hi Tom, we continuously linked to Depay. Do you think Mikel was uh, has him in mind for that forward position? I'd be surprised if he did. I don't think he's one for the summer. <clears throat> but who knows? Maybe he will be." We'll have to wait and see. Um, Lynn says, if I was a betting woman, I would say if any club has more chance of getting Basuma, I think Arsenal would be best or rather near the top because Brighton knows we will pay over the top for him. It's a good point. We do tend to overpay on players. Uh, Namdi says, don't you think we need a Partey backup? Not El Nenny though. Plus you see what my concerns are about the transfer window. You think we will get two forwards? I hope we will. Do we need a backup for Partey? I mean, El Nenny and Lokonga are both options that can play there. Lokonga needs to develop and improve to, I think, be that Partey replacement. I think that's why they bought him. I think they do see him as a Partey cover competition replacement in the future. I think they see him as that. He's a very, very good player. Very, very quick to to want a brand new toy. We're very quick to want that, you know, at Arsenal. We have this new toy syndrome, as I like to call it. Lokonga is at the club. Lokonga is a great prospect, a great talent. 22 now. And there needs to be given the time to play in that Partey role to one day take on that position, in my view, from him. Uh, Don White says, uh, Tottenham gave Conte 188 million uh, for the transfer window. Arsenal needs to do better for the new season. Arsenal should be giving Arteta 200 million, but I'm concerned he might misuse the money. You shouldn't be concerned about him misusing the money just yet because I think we've spent our money very, very well in comparison to what's happened prior to Arteta taking over. I think we need to be encouraged by what we're going to be hopefully doing this summer. And who knows? We'll see how much we spend. I don't think we'll see it published quite like Spurs have. And if I was Spurs, I probably wouldn't have published it because it's just told everybody in the market that you've got money to spend raising the asking price of any player that you go for. Neil says, does signing Eddie show a lack of ambition? Um, I don't see two strikers. It will be signed this window. It depends on what we do, Neil. If we don't go out and sign two forwards, as I'd like us to go and do, then yes, I think it does show a lack of ruthlessness in the market. If we go out and sign just the one forward this summer and renew Eddie and Ketty's contract, 
I'd say that we've not set ourselves up anywhere near as much as we've needed to, to be honest. So uh, I would question the ambition if we only did go out and sign one forward this summer and renewed Eddie's contract. So I'm hoping that we go out and sign the two forwards that I'd like to see us go and get. Abe says, considering we've re-signed Eddie and we're looking at someone physical like an Ozymenska Makatami, do you think Jesus is being viewed as a goal-scoring right winger? I think Jesus is being viewed very much like that as a versatile forward that they can use in multiple areas, in multiple positions, giving them plenty of Premier League experience and quality and cover, whilst also hopefully going for another physical forward as well. Um, Jabu says, one of the things I love about TGT is our ability to change our minds about a player. We don't defend old opinions, but use current data to have discussions. It's a very well summed up way we look at it. I think if you get married to a point of view and you can't shift from it, you're only going to hurt yourself when eventually, you know, all the evidence is going against you and you look a little bit silly for staying with that point of view. You've got to have an open mind. You've got to have a viewpoint that changes. And if the evidence suggests that changes, then great. I always thought that Eddie and Ketia wouldn't make it at Arsenal. If he signs a new deal and starts scoring goals, I cannot wait to be proven wrong. Cannot wait to be proven wrong about Eddie and Ketia because it will mean that Arsenal are succeeding. And that's always going to be the bottom line expectation and hope for me. Uh, Ashton says, would Jesus, Schick, Gnabry, Tielemans and Hickey win us the Europa League? I would blooming hope so. <laughs> Ashton, that's a mental window if we get it done. Mm, but I would, yeah, I would blooming hope so if it did. Uh, Yomi says, do you know how Jack Wilshere is doing in the Danish league? He will be a free transfer this summer. Should we consider him as an extra body? No, we shouldn't consider him as an extra body. If you want to know how Jack Wilshere is getting on, though, keep your eyes peeled. Um, I'll be able to share more information about that very, very soon. Um, GGT with you says, Tottenham having $150 million to spend. Do you think that proves that we were lied to? Our stadium left us broke for 10 years with no money to spend and is not as good as theirs. No, I don't think it does. Uh, the, the two scenarios are very different. 2006, 2022. Inflation of transfer prices compared to those two years is just very, very different. And if you also remember, Spurs have been in the Champions League, you know, when the money's gone significantly up in a, in a much more recent time. You know, the money was never the same back then as it was now. That's why. And also, they've got an ownership that are seemingly putting money into it, whereas we didn't. Um, we didn't have that. Cam says, do you think uh, it's wise for Sita to be risking losing Jesus for nothing when his contract runs out? I don't think they're going to have to worry about that, Cam. You know, they've got six odd clubs chasing Jesus right now, Arsenal leading that race. So I don't think they're going to have to worry about it. And that's why I think that's why they can ask for that amount of money, if possible. Um, the Assembled says, no matter who Arsenal buy, the players are restricted to fitting into a structure and tactics that doesn't allow for self-expression. That's interesting because I've seen plenty of goals this season that have come from lots of self-expression. So I'm not sure that's actually accurate. Russell says, like the video, like the video, like the video. Come on, viewers, support Tom. Great content. Thank you, Russell. I think you're getting your point across well there, mate. Uh, Alex says, I'd be fine with the Saka backup and someone... I don't want to see the word backup. I hate the word backup. We shouldn't be looking to sign backups. We should be looking to sign competition. That's what we need to look to sign. I'm not having a go at you, by the way, Alex. But we just need to, you know, in my mind, you shouldn't be signing someone as a backup. Always from now, from this point forwards, we need to sign Aaron Hickey because he's got the potential to be our left back. We should be signing Nahuel Molina because he's got the potential to be our right back. We should be signing Gabriel Jesus, Yuri Tielemans, Gakpo, because they've got the potential to be our starters, not backups. I don't want to hear the word backup. I want to hear the word starters. That's what I want to hear. And that's where we're only going to be able to move forwards is if we manage to get those starters. I know I went off on a bit of a rant there, but, <laughs> but that's what I believe. That's what I think needs to happen. Uh, Walt says, would you take Rashford as a wide forward for competition for Martinelli? Depends on the fee. Um, there's no no one should underestimate Marcus Rashford, but if the fee is ridiculous, then no, and I would kind of expect it to be. Uh, Olu says, is Eddie suffering from the Tammy Abraham syndrome? Very good player, but never got the chance at Chelsea despite a very good goal-scoring record. Kane also had similar issues early on at Spurs. And this is the problem, is that I think Eddie Nketiah is showing Arsenal what they might miss out on. And I think they're concerned that they might miss out on what Eddie Nketiah could give them in the future. He's showing that. Five goals in eight of his last starts. He's a very good return in the Premier League. As I said, across a whole Premier League season, if he was to maintain that record, and there's no reason why he couldn't, considering during that eight-game period, Arsenal were without some of their crucial starters and were playing with a weakened side. 
that when we've got a full strength team, that Eddie and Ketia couldn't maintain that record. And then you're looking at 15 to 20 Premier League goals, which is what we need from a striker minimum. You know, we didn't have that at all this season. Had we have had 15 to 20 goals this season, perhaps, perhaps we could have done better. What what would have happened if Eddie and Ketia had played all the games this season? I don't know. But what he has given in the last eight starts has been very, very good and a good sign for the future. Um, Ashwin, I've missed your question. There it is. Uh, Tom, what do you think of Sporting's Gonzalo uh, Inacio? Uh, who, uh, that's not Portuguese at all, unless he is Portuguese, unless he is Spanish. It should be Gonzalo Ignacio, I think. I think the C is pronounced hard, but maybe that's with the accent. Who's your pick for the left side centre-back role to compete with Gabriel? I don't know Gonzalo Ignacio. What, who I do know is Gonzalo... Um, uh, oh, why is his surname escaped me? Uh, Gonchalves. Um, sorry, Pedro Gonchalves, the uh, attacking midfielder slash kind of wide forward for Sporting. He's definitely someone that I would be very, very interested in Arsenal. So I don't know Ignacio though. Uh, who is my pick for the left-sided centre back role to compete with Gabriel? Um, look, I don't think we necessarily need a left footer anymore because Saliba can play in both sides. The centre back I would sign is Kulabali because I think that his experience is, you know, what he's gained whilst with Napoli. And the level that he's at and the money that he would cost, which is about £25 million, would absolutely be worth it to bring him into the team. Let's have a quick check on our poll for today. Uh, it seems like Victor Ozimen is going to be winning uh, the tactical breakdown race. We'll be covering him, it seems, later on this afternoon. Don't you worry if you wanted the other two, Gabriel Jesus and Aaron Hickey, will both be covered in our breakdown series on the channel. We were just giving you the control as to who you wanted to see first. Uh, Knuckles says, Tom, with five subs needed for next season, would it be more concerning seeing Xhaka start next to next season rather than having El Elneny and Eddie as squad players? Look, if Xhaka's starting at the start of next season, it's not going to be a big surprise to me. Um, but with the five substitutions, it gives us a lot more wiggle room and change as well. Tyler Adams is a no-brainer, says Ricky. I've spoken about Tyler Adams a lot on this channel. Very, very versatile. Good option. Can play right back, right mid, or centre mid, defensive mid, can play everywhere. Good leader, captain of the US national side, really strong option for Arsenal. Uh, Jasha says, Tom, do you think it's right that some players get judged on apps and not minutes? Uh, yes, if you're judging a player based on apps and ignoring how many minutes they played in those appearances, then you're not giving them a fair rap. If you're saying that Eddie Nketiah has got five goals in 21 games, that's not fair. You know, looking at goals, even goals per minute can sometimes be off because some of those minutes are, as Eddie said in his interview, at the end of games. If you're being sent on in the last six, seven, eight minutes of a game and expected to go and get a goal, get up to speed with the game state, you know, it's, it's hard. But if you're given consistent starts, maybe you start seeing the, the benefits. Now, I think that Eddie and Ketia had seen the benefit of that. So there you go. Uh, Jamie says, goal bonus for Eddie won't matter. Uh, he'll never hit the required number to get those bonus. Should have cut him loose. Jamie, I think that's harsh, especially considering, as we've already talked about, his goal record in the last eight starts is very, very good. Look, if we went and signed someone, let's put it this way. If we went and signed someone in January, you know, and they played eight games and they scored, they started eight times, and they scored five goals, we'd be raving to say that they need to start next season. We'd be absolutely raving that they need to start. Say if we went and signed, I don't know, um, who are we really linked with? Isaac, right? So if we went and signed Isaac and he was injured from January because he got a bad injury in training and was only available for the last eight starts and say in those last eight starts, he scored five goals, we'd be like, great. You know, I can't wait to see what he can do next season. Can't wait to see him start next season. That is the reality is that if his name wasn't Eddie Nketiah, if he wasn't 22 years, two years old, and if he, maybe he wasn't English, which unfortunately goes against players, um, maybe we'd be really judging him quite differently. Um, but it's just the way of the world. It's the way that it goes. But I would be open to seeing him what he can do. But my problem with the re-signing of Eddie Nketiah is I'm concerned that it will affect who we sign in the summer. That's my worry, is that re-signing him up to a brand new contract affects what we do in the summer. And, you know, that's, I just hope that it's, I hope that it pays off. I really do. I really, really, really do. But you're not going to miss anything on this show, because as we say, we cover Arsenal's transfer news 8am every single UK time morning. Thank you to everybody that joins us throughout these. We are going to wrap up today's show. I will be back later on this afternoon to discuss Victor Ozimen, it seems, who has won today's poll with 41% of the vote. 
We'll be talking about Victor Ozzyman. We'll be comparing him to players like Gabriel Jesus, of course, and other central strikers that we have and that we are linked to. So do make sure you tune in and have those notifications turned on so you don't miss that. I'll make sure to tweet out when we're doing the show so you've got well in advance Oh, you know well in advance when we're going to be doing it and you can tune in and join us for the first main transfer target tactical breakdown of the 2022-23 season. Uh, I will see you soon. Have a great day, people. Enjoy yourselves. And as always, up the Arsenal.